Michael Smith, big data is breaking apart the entertainment industry and it's causing companies to stream, share, and steal, which is the title of your brand new book. As far as streaming, Netflix is coming up with new uh, series by using big data. So does that mean the upfronts are over and pilot season is over? What does that mean? I think it means that Netflix is able to do things that you couldn't do in traditional television. In traditional television, you had to find the audience. You had to make content that would, that would get as many, as many viewers as possible. Netflix, because it knows who its viewers are, can target that content to exactly the right audience. And that's exactly what Netflix did with House of Cards. They created nine separate trailers for segments of the audience and they, and they sent it out that way. And Amazon and Hulu are doing something similar with customized content. So what does that mean for the Nielsen ratings and the Arbitron ratings? So what's the future of TV going to look like? I think the future of TV is going to, is going to look like individual engagement being much more important than attracting vast audiences. If I can find something that appeals to you and will convince you to subscribe next month, that's what I need to do to, to survive in, a, in an on-demand streaming world. Much more than what you needed with Nielsen, which is vast segments of the audience all watching the same content. All right, well that's streaming. Let's talk about sharing now. You have major uh, entertainers like Louis C.K. and J.K. Rowling of Harry Potter fame. They're creating their own channels. So what does that mean for the future of entertainment? Because not everyone can do it. Not everyone can do it, but on the internet you can find your own little segment of the audience. My, my kids love Epic Rap Battles of History, which is a YouTube channel. And, you know, it's a, it's a niche little audience, but they know who their customers are, they can directly access their customers, and you can do things in that medium that you couldn't do in a broadcast medium. So is the system going to have to mean you have big stars like Louis C.K. who can do it, but you're still going to need entertainment companies to cultivate some of the smaller players? Because not everyone can do a, a pay-for-per-view uh, for model like Louis or J.K. Rowling. Not everybody can do that. I think we're going to have both. But what I think by having both, we're actually going to open up new entertainment opportunities that wouldn't exist if you only had the one model. All right, now let's talk about stealing. Piracy is rampant in this new digital uh, entertainment world. Can you stop it? Because artists want to get paid. Artists want to get paid and artists need to get paid and consumers need for artists to get paid. If the artists can't get paid, they're not going to make as much high quality content. The, the concern with piracy is not just piracy hurts sales, but it also makes it harder for the entertainment industry to execute all of their business models. All their business models are based on being able to control when you get access to the content and what format you get access, and piracy makes all of those business models harder to execute. All right, so we're here on Wall Street. Let's put this all together. Who do you think the winners and losers are going to be from an investment perspective? Because you've seen Netflix, the stock was flying. A lot of people say its valuation is too high and it's become just another network like CBS. I think the winners are going to be the people who own the customer and own the customer data and also own the platforms that will allow them to deliver the content directly to the customer. I wonder whether we're undervaluing the importance of the customer data in some of these situations. So does that mean companies like Amazon and Netflix because they know exactly what I'm watching on TV and I can watch a movie on Amazon and then I can buy some popcorn along with it? I think the companies who, exactly, Amazon, Netflix, Google with, with YouTube, know an incredible amount about their consumers and can use that, consume, use that information to better market content. Um, I think it's the customers who own the data who are going to come out on top, or the, the, the firms who own the data. And then I guess some of the big media players, the old school folks, are going to have to adapt. That's what we're trying to argue in the book, is that uh, the owning the customer data, there are a lot of people in the industry who are worried that data, adding data into creativity is going to mess up creativity. What we're trying to argue in the book is the, it's not changing the creative, it's actually doing a better job of marketing the creative, that the, the data becomes incredibly important when it comes time to market the content. All right, well, thanks a lot for coming and talk about it, Michael. Thanks, Greg, appreciate it. And thank you for watching the street.